Ladies and gentlemen, it is the final chapter of Thor's brutal war against the God of Hammers, and following the horrific and tragic loss of Odin, Thor is determined, now more than ever, to finish the fight, once and for all. Thor issue number 23 was a great conclusion to the God of Hammers story arc. Donny Cates continues to bring Thor's emotional struggle of being a king, along with the ability of letting go and continuing the fight, is definitely heartbreaking. And you can almost feel the anger that Thor is feeling towards the death of his father and his hatred towards Mjolnir, a weapon or basically a piece of Thor that for a majority of his life has symbolized him as the Marvel hero we know. Another thing Donny Cates does extremely well is using the concepts of powers and or said rules for those powers to affect characters in a way which makes sense. You know, for example, Thor using the Bifrost sword to trap Mjolnir, like stuff like that is great and it makes sense and it doesn't feel forced because Donny Cates isn't making something up to make this move work. He's basically using what's already been established regarding the Bifrost. So yeah, why not try it? When it comes to the book's art, as always, Nick Klein slaps it. Klein has the ability to make every panel feel livid and dirty, especially during the action scenes between Thor and his hammer. However, one of the greatest parts of the issue is the flashback scene between Thor and Odin, where Thor is learning on how to use Mjolnir. What's great about this is the fact that this scene is drawn with calm and a sense of peace. Thor doesn't look as if he's experienced the worst of the worst. Rather, Thor looks like someone who holds so much potential, yet he is a god who is inexperienced. And Nick Klein depicts Thor as someone who is yet to have his shoes dirty. And obviously Matt Wilson on colors knocks it out of the park with his ability to lighten the mood within these scenes. And when it comes to Thor smacking the god of hammers, it's clearly about the Thor in the present when compared to the past as a much more hardened Thor who has killed so many monsters and has just witnessed the death of his father. Basically, yeah, the art team is incredible. Thor issue number 23 was a great issue that concluded the God of Hammer story arc, while also leaving Thor in a state of mind where he can actually feel able to talk to people, talk to his friends and allies, because whether you're a king or a god of thunder, people always need a shoulder or two to lean on. Thor issue number 23 gets an 8.5 out of 10. Our story starts things off with a flashback. Back in the day, where Thor is being taught by his father on how to properly wield and control Mjolnir. Basically folks, this is the Asgardian equivalent to father and son playing catch. Now Thor, he seems to be afraid of his hammer's power, but Odin assures him that, the, that Mjolnir cannot hurt him. Odin then goes on about the hammer's creation, and though he doesn't go into detail, he explains that the hammer contains the souls of the dwarves who built it, and that sometimes during the heat of battle, when all hope seems to be lost, you can hear their whispers, telling whomever to keep their eyes open, small advice to basically any wielder. And with that, Thor is finally comprehending the concept of controlling his hammer. Now once the lessons for the day are seemingly done, Thor wonders on, on what will happen to his soul when he dies. And Odin lets him know that no one really dies. Rather in death, what would become our legends. And that's when we immediately switch scenes to the present day, where Thor who, having just witnessed the sacrifice of his father, is imbued with the maximum amount of Odin force, and he's decked out with glorious golden armor. And hot damn on a stick, folks, Thor here is raging. He is ready to kick ass and take some names. And speaking of names, Thor calls out the Sith via his crows, telling her that he needs her sword, and that he promises he'll return it to her after. Sif obliges, and she sends down the Bifrost sword down to Braxton. Once the weapon is in Thor's possession, he utilizes the weapon's ability and he uses the Bifrost Sword's power to essentially cage the God of Hammers. And after the Storm Mother is having a WTF moment, Thor takes back his hammer and from there he activates the, the Bifrost and he sends both himself and the Storm Mother to the realm of Noveldir, the home to the dwarves. And with both combatants showing up in a different setting, Thor tells the God of Hammers that this is a forge and that this is the place where you will die. Essentially, Thor has brought the Storm out of here in order to unmake her. And what seems to be happening is that since Mjolnir was forged here by the dwarves, all of its enchantments, the heat of a billion suns, every piece of magic that was placed on by Odin, imbued into the hammer, is unraveling before us, to a point where the God of Hammers can't hurt him. Mjolnir can't hurt Thor, the God of Thunder. 
And from there, Thor smacks the hammer against the forge. And with every epic mighty smack, the hammer gets chipped away. And with every strike, we witness that the last remnant of Odin's legacy is coming undone to the point where the hammer is nothing more than bits. Bits of Oro metal and that of its wooden handle. And with the god of hammers finally defeated, Thor collapses and falls into the Odin sleep due to the amount of Odin force he used. Four months later, Thor finally awakens back in Asgard, where our thundering hero is met with his mother Freya, Angela, and his brother Loki, all of whom were waiting by his bedside to make sure Thor would be okay. Now Thor begins to immediately freak out, but his family tries to calm him down, telling him to get some rest and just, you know, just relax, bro. And they also let Thor know that there is no body of Odin to bury, so yeah, just know we'll hold a ceremony later on. Yet Thor is still acting quite stubborn. He's still acting like the king who doesn't need anyone's help. But this is where Angela steps in and manages to relax Thor, reminding him that he isn't the only one who lost Odin. And so she tells her brother to meet her in the armory once you get your, your shit together. Later on, Thor checks in the armory to meet up with Angela. And what he sees surprises him because what he sees is a, is a reforged Mjolnir. And this is where Angela pops up and tells our hero that the angels of heaven helped to remake it. And sure, we're not the dwarves, but we were able to manage sufficiently enough. To which she reminds him that she promised Thor that she would clean his shit up. And so once Angela leaves, Thor is left alone with the magic-less hammer. And it's here where he begins to pray, a way to honor and to pay respect to his father. And he's telling his dad via prayer that he's scared. He's scared to move forward and that he's just not like him and that he can't see the correct path like he could. But it's here where the words of Odin whisper to Thor via the hammer, telling his son to open his eyes, whilst also mentioning that a king cannot rule from his knees. And that, folks, was the end of Thor, issue number 23. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly means the world to me. And as always, I'm your majestic sayer over at Supercliff, and if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell so you'll never miss out on an upload, and so you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number 24, the 750th issue of Thor altogether? Let me know down in the comments section below, and until the next video, peace.